Now, but you, you begin to see that when God did that, he had a call. Now, when you see that our God, if God had a call, then the Bible says, be therefore as perfect as your heavenly father is. It means our lives must be goal-centered. Yeah. A church without a goal, in other words, without any aim, is a church that has lost direction. Yeah. We must be actually friends. What are we coming here for? What are we trying to achieve as a church? Yeah. We're not coming for a, 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 a dress show here. Where we must find who's the best dress sister, who's the best dress brother in the church. That's not why we are coming here. But you find today, the people will now try to go to church and uh, come even late with, you know, uh, dealing with things that everyone will tell them that Now, you see, people now have a wrong impression about why they are coming to church. Did you begin to see that? Now, the church here, we need to be a church with an aim. Amen. That's what we need to be. A, a people with a goal in their lives, with a purpose in their lives, with an aim that we know what we are aiming for. Because our God is a God of purpose. Amen. You see, when he started creating, there was the heaven, there was the earth. You know? Now, the amazing thing is, he left the heaven. And the story now doesn't continue with the heaven, it continues with the earth. Amen. The, well, the next verse it says, and the earth was without form. He doesn't talk about the heaven anymore. That's why Adam was created to stay here on the earth. So it was something about this earth that he had actually a goal for. You understand what we are talking about? So then he looks at the earth. Oh, I love this phrase. He looks at the earth. The Bible says it was dark, void, empty, and, and, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Is that what the Bible says? Now the earth in that condition could not be a useful earth. So God had to address the conditions that were on the earth. The first condition he addressed was darkness. So he said, let there be light. And then there was light. Then God saw that, okay, fine, we've addressed the issue of darkness, but the earth is still covered with water. Then the Lord said, let us separate the waters and from the waters. And then he says, there's waters above and waters below. Do you begin to see that what God did? He separated the waters from the waters. And the earth was in between them. Amen. Then the Bible says, and the dry land appeared. You see, when he did that, the earth was still covered with water now. He said, now, let's, the, the waters all separate. And then he called some seas and everything, and the dry land appeared. Then God addressed now the earth. Now, do you see where he was going? So all this was a process where God was aiming at something. Then when the dry land appeared, then God addressed the earth. Amen. He said, let the earth bring forth. Is that what the Bible says in the book of Genesis? Amen. So the earth was placed under commandment to do what? Bring forth. Now, you see, whenever you talk about the earth, I want you to understand you are talking about yourself because you are an earth yourself. Amen. 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 Because the Bible is a compound meaning. When you are dressing natural earth, you are dressing this earth too. Because the Bible says, Dust thou art too, dust thou will. So you are part of the earth. So if God was addressing this earth, he was addressing you. When you are saying, bring forth, it means you must bring forth. You are under commandment to bring forth. Amen. Amen. So you begin to see that during your life here on earth, God is putting it. No, nobody prayed here to come to earth. There was no democracy. You did not even have to come through the family that you came through. Something was determining everything. And you don't determine when you are going to get out. You won't say, well, when I'm very old, that's when I'll start coming to church. No! Your whole system can shut down when you are still in your teens. Do you begin to see that? So now, when you are here, you are under commandment. Because God at the end is going to require that I commanded you to bring forth. Is that scripture? Amen. Because in the book of John, uh, uh, John chapter 15, he said, I sent you that you may bear much fruit. That's what he says. He said, I sent you to bear fruit and much fruit. He doesn't just want the fruit. You want much fruit from you. Amen. 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 So you begin to see now that God, now there was a process. Okay? He starts with heaven and earth. He drops down to what? To the earth. The earth is not looking very good. So he addresses the conditions which are upon the earth. That's why Paul says, uh, the, as God spoke light in, you know, uh, 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 in darkness, 
He says also in the book of Ephesians, you were once darkness. Then he says in the book of uh, Corinthians, but he spoke light, as God spoke light, he spoke also light into our hearts. Amen. Do you begin to see that he was driving the darkness in our hearts? Amen. Amen. Then he was calling you from among the waters. The waters are people, nations and tongues. He's calling you out. You know, I said something to the church this morning that to, uh, you know, to, to uh, beat the orchestra, you must have your back to the crowds. Yes. Now, a person who conducts the orchestra does not actually look at the, at the crowds. No, his back will be to the crowd because you have a goal that you are on, and the crowd is back there. In order to walk with the God, you have to walk alone. And the crowd is going to be at your back. Hallelujah. That's Christianity, friends. Amen. Sometimes I feel lonely on the shore where I wait. In this world that you died for, there's so much evil in it. All my friends are so few. You know, that song actually goes like that, headed for glory in a ship coming through. Now, so you begin to see, friends, that God was moving, was moving. Now, the earth, as it was now when God brought all the other things, it was not perfect without us. Amen. Do you begin to see that? Because in Isaiah 45 verse 18, he says, I did not create the earth in vain. Mm. For the benefit of others, just open Isaiah 45 verse 18. So I want to show you that all these things are starting from God. That's why they start from That's why the devil always starts with what God has actually done. Whenever he does something, he has nothing original. He has to start. When he came to Eve, he started with and God said. So he started with what God is saying. Because he has nothing of his own. In the parable of the wheat and tears, the Bible says the good man had a field. And the bad man, did he have a field? He came to the field of the good man. He had no field of his own. The devil has nothing original of his own. He has to come to what God has done and then he went from there. His job is to perfect everything. That's why it's called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Evil comes from a Hebrew word, ra, which means failure to attain to good standards. Which means you start with a standard, and when the standard is dropped, it creates a condition called evil. So evil does not exist on its own. Just like darkness does not exist on its own. Darkness, darkness is just only what the absence of light. That's what darkness is always. It's always an absence of light. Praise the Lord. Now, uh, in Isaiah 45, verse 18, shall we read it together? Let's read Isaiah 45, verse 18 together. What does the Bible say? He created it not in which means he had a goal for creating it. What was the goal? He formed it to be. So without us, the earth could not be. It could not be perfect. Now you understand the use of these words in the Bible. Without us, the earth was not perfect. That's why when God created man on the sixth day and he looked at man, what did he say? This is very good. Yet when he was creating day one, he said it's good. Day two, it was good. Day three, it was good. Day four, it was good. Day five, it was good. But day six, when man stood on the head, God said, this is very good. He had come to the perfection of his creation. That's when God rested. Yes, sir. Amen. He could not rest. Amen. On day one, he could not rest on day two. He could not rest on day three. But when man finally was created, God then I can now rest. Hallelujah. Amen. Then he committed all those things to the men that he had created. Do you begin to see that, friends? So without us, this earth could not be made perfect. Amen. Now, as a church body now. Without the church at the end, the church at the beginning cannot be made perfect. Amen. Oh, yeah. You understand what you are saying, friends? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
that, 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 that is why, you know, we read that quotation, I'm going to read it when the prophet says, without us, they could not be made perfect. But what I would just like to, um, and, and also in the speech of a perfect man, where he said, so this church it has got to come to perfection in order to bring the resurrection. Do you see? The resurrection cannot happen unless we come to our goal. The goal that is intended right at the end. When that Amen. goal is attained, then the resurrection happens. Yes. Do you begin to see that? Amen. Amen. Now, this quotation is actually powerful in uh, the exposition of the seven churches, the Christian church. church. When he said, now we watch, we want to consider not the individual, but the groups represented in the church. So to do so, we like, we liken the church through the edges to the wheat plant. Now, a grain of wheat is planted to the end. <laughs> and I like this. Now, you must actually, you know, some of these words, you know, we are going to come to this way that and he says, it's planted to the end. Now, it's not being used like you come to the end of a, a road. Now, he's saying a grain of wheat is planted to the end that a single grain of wheat will reproduce and multiply itself. In other words, the use of this word now is actually what? Objective. Which brings what? <coughs> Which brings the word whole again. To say the, the, a grain of wheat is planted to the end, in other words, to the objective to the goal that it might actually do. You understand that? What we're talking about? Yes. We're not talking about the end, like the end of a, uh, a street. Okay, fine. There's so many places in the Bible who could actually show you where Paul Peter says, you know, receiving the end of your faith, yes, sir. which is the salvation of your souls. So what is the end of your faith, the goal of your faith? The salvation of your souls. Do you begin to see what we're talking about? Amen. Amen. All right. So now we 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 we, we drew also this quickly uh, the, 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 the church ages, okay, and we we, we, we tried to we, we draw the church ages one, there, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, right. That's how you know they were in the Old Testament. These were the candlesticks that you found in the holy place. You know, and they to be lighted. You know, lighted to actually you have to light this one. Then you light to the fire. And this one is lit to the fire of this one, and so on and so on. And there was oil here, so you would draw oil so that they, they would light up the candlesticks. You have to light up. Now he's saying we want to liken the church age to actually a wheat. Yeah. A wheat grain. Now you see, a, a, we say a seed. When you talk about a seed. It is a process that it goes through. Mm -hmm. it, it will go through uh, uh, a shoot. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it, it, it should, 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 I don't know what it should. Then it goes on to a stone. Then it goes on to a tassel. Then it, it goes on to uh, a shark. Shark. Then, then the end result will be deceived again. Right. So when you plant a seed, in, in the mango seed, you plant a seed. Now within that seed, there is a power of transformation contained within that seed. There is a life inside that seed there. Yes, now, that's why I say if you tell a child that within this seed, there are branches, there are leaves, there are what, you look at you and wonder, what in the world age? But it's true, it's all contained in there, is that right? Yeah. But it is to go in the ground first. If it abides alone, it doeth no harm. I hope you understand that. Amen. You see, yes. it has to go them through a process. Yes. You see, so you see, brother, sister, with the shoot only, it's not yet perfect. Mm -hmm. with, with the stock, it's not yet perfect. Mm -hmm. It reaches its perfection when it reproduces this seeds in a multiplied form. Then it has come to its perfection. Mm -hmm. Now he. The problem of God says that we will liken them the church age to actually the planting of a wheat grain, yes. which shows you that they could not be made perfect until these high time brothers and, and sisters yes. come. Do you see what we are talking about perfection? Yes. Because where a body, a body is not perfect without the hands, it's not perfect without we are the body of Jesus Christ and He is the head. Yes. When the body is all built up, then the 
the head becomes on and then the whole thing becomes. That's why the Bible says we are the body of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And then Paul said the body is composed of fingers, it's composed. Is that what the Bible teaches? Yes. Yeah. yes. So is the body complete just with toes only? No. Is it complete with uh, 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 do you see when we are talking about perfection now? Is the goal and the full state of the person comes up? Yes. You understand what we are talking about? Yes. yes. Praise the Lord. So that's why we look at the parable of the sower. I, I want us just to quickly go back to the parable of the sower. You know, in Luke chapter 8, this, I, I have to repeat this quickly. And I hope we can move quickly and go on to the next thing. So in Luke chapter 8, verse 11 to 14, we have to repeat this thing so that somehow they actually stick in the hearts and minds of the saints. Now, Christ was talking about the parable. Now, I want to read verse 11, which shows you that the word of God is a seed, and then we go to verse 14, which is the one that I want to refer to. All right, Luke chapter 8, verse 11 to uh, verse 11 and verse 14. Let's read verse 11 together. What does the Bible say? Now, the parable of the seed is the word of God. Wait a minute. So, this seed we are talking about here, the Bible says, is the word. Hmm. So, if the word of God is a seed. It means inside the word there must be life. Yes. Because every seed has got what? Life inside there. And, and we saw it, that's how the Bible speaks in John chapter 1. It says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was we? And the word was? It says, in him the word was? Do you say, in him the word was? Life. It was life. So inside the seed here, there is life inside. Now the word of God is also a seed, which means inside the seed of God, there is life. This is right, friends. Every time you come here to hear the word of God, there is something that is actually happening in your heart and beyond yourself. Great things happen in silence. You understand, friends? That's what God, when God does things, he doesn't make noise about it. That's why he says, even when you pray, enter your secret closet and close the door. Yeah. And he says, but the hypocrites, they want to pray openly so that the people can see them and get a reward from people. But he says, but you, when you pray, enter your secret closet. The Father that sees in secret will reward you openly. The people who wonder how in the open they see things happen, they don't know the secret behind it's your prayer life that you are happening in secret. Amen. Do you begin to see what we are seeing? Amen. Amen. So you begin to see now. Let's read verse 14. Now of uh, oh, I love this. I hope you are loving it. You know. Amen. Let's read verse 14 together. What does it say? What does not bring fruit to perfection is the seed that was sown that is now choked with so many things. Do you begin to see that? And when that seed is choked, then it cannot what move in its, in, 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 in its process to perfection. Do you see now the word of God is also saying the same thing here? He said when a seed is actually sown, it is sown to the end that it may bring forth fruit to perfection. Do, do you begin to see that? So the seed is the word. Christ is saying when those were the head, the word. But you see the Bible talks about they did not mix this word with faith. Yes. The saddest verse that I read in the Bible today is when the Bible says, you know, the gospel was preached unto them, but the word did not profit them. Not being mixed with. Now you see, we can preach here from morning until the cows come home, but sometimes the word won't profit the people, you know? Because they take that word and they mix it with so many things, and that's what God hated from the beginning. Amen. And the devil had that knowledge that if you take the seed then you mix it with something, you will never produce the perfection that it actually paid that knowledge. Amen. He is the father of what? Of hybridization. The first 
person to hybrid things with the devil himself. He makes the seeds. As soon as you make seeds, you catch off. It's true, friends. We're going to come to that in another message by the grace of God. That's why I think I told you the verses, you know, Leviticus 19:19 and Deuteronomy 22, verse 9. When God says, Don't sow diverse seeds in one field. And then he gives the reason in the lest the fruit be defiled. Do you begin to see that? In other words, the, the, the seed here that was supposed to what? The fruit to perfection. It gets defiled. Therefore, it can produce what it was originally intended for. Do you begin to see, friends? This is the problem of crossbreeding. This is the problem today that we have with the hybridizing food and giving it to people. Mm. It's killing people. That's why today you go to, uh, like in South Africa, you go to Woolies. In the hotel, we sell here organic, organic food. And they, as opposed to what? Inorganic. So they now begin to say that there is organic food and there is inorganic. And they tell you that when you go organic, you are actually eating very healthy. Brother, sister, this word here, this is organic food. Any person that adds and subtract, you are now doing what? Bringing what? Inorganic. That's why the Bible says you must not add to my word, neither must you subtract. Because God knows as soon as you add, whatever he intended the way to do, it actually stops. It comes. That's why Paul, remember, I we read Hebrews chapter uh, Romans chapter 9, where he said that with great happiness concerning my people who are Israelites, to whom pertains the adoption, the promises, to whom the fathers, but this is not as if the word of God has taken any effect. In other words, he's saying, if the covenant, the promises, and all this, why are we not seeing something in Israel? That's what Paul is saying. He says, it's, it's as if the word of God is taking an effect. Then he says, but they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. They are not all sons, which are sons. Then he says, oh, because Abraham had too many other sons by Keturah, he had other sons by Hagar, but God only considered those who came through Isaac. Do you begin to say, and those are the ones to whom the way they defect upon their lives. You must be one of those where the word of God has effect upon your life. Yeah. All the preaching that we hear, all the listening to the text, all, all these things should have effect on your life. Brother, sister, if you can't be corrected by the word, there's nothing that will ever correct you. It's the word that must correct us. When you read, say, ah, this is what the Bible says. Amen. Amen. Right. But the problem is, we want to look too much to the world and bring the world inside the, what, the gospel. When you are supposed to be a separated people. Amen. The problem with the children of Israel, after God had pulled them out to a different world, where they had the pillar of fire above them, and God in the way that he was now leading them, which was completely different. There's a scripture there where Moses said, there's no nation like Israel. Right. Where he says, with a law like no other nation. Right. Then he says, for us to do all that, it is righteousness to us. Yeah. Which means there's no other nation that had the laws like what Israel did. Right. So the other nations were running their lives the way they ran. Yeah. But then the children of Israel looked to the nations and we want to be like the nations. And God says, I've been rejected. Amen. Little did they know that the nations were under the power and influence of the devil. Yeah. Because if you go to the book of Daniel, remember, it says there was a king, Darius, yeah. who was the king of Persia. Now, Darius was a human being like you and me. Mm. He was king over Persia. Yeah. But you see, Daniel was praying in that, in, in, in that, in that land. For 21 days he had been fasting. Then an angel came and said, at the beginning of your supplication I was sent with answers to your prayer. But the devil, he says what? The king of Persia resisted me. 21 days. 
Now, was it Darius who was resisting an angel? Yet Darius was a king, but there was a king over you, which was a demon. Do you begin to see? So the nations are actually under demons. The demon is already in Zimbabwe. You look at what you say, but like an empty, a certain way. Because what the money rocks South Africa. You look at what you say, a certain way. Because what the money rocks in Germany. What the money rocks in Germany, you go over there, but the money rocks in Germany. But you wait, wait. You're supposed to be under the influence of the heavenly kingdom. That's what must influence your thinking, influence your attitude. Influence your dressing, influence your interaction with people. Amen. Amen. You must not forget your origin. Amen. Like that Negro slave who was taken from Africa right to America there. Yeah. And when he was there, he always stood shoulder high, chest, you know, stuck out. That all the other slave owners, he said, but what, what was different with this slave? Do you give him something to eat more than the other? He says, no, he is the same thing. He says, why is he special? Is he the boss of the other? He says, no. He says, but why is he acting so special? He says, because we also were that till we understood where the in Africa is the son of the king. And he's never forgotten that he still behaves himself like a son of the king. Oh, brother, says, we are sons and daughters of the king. Amen. Amen. That's why our sisters dress the way they dress. When they ask him, I say, where we come from? That's how we dress. Amen. Amen. No, no, not with the dresses that are so short that you can't even greet a sister. You can't say, God oh, bless you, sister. <laughs> with, with, with the dresses, with the low cleavage, what is it called? Cleavage or whatever. <laughs> that you can't look at your sister to greet a nice Now, the people of this world, they want to display all those things are on display. But you know, if you have a gift that you're giving somebody, what do you do? You let it out. Yes, sir. Amen. Do you see? And all these people that are not wrapped up, all the flies are chasing them. Amen. Do you begin to see? I, 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 I read somewhere where uh, the previous president of America, his wife, Melanie, she was Melanie, yeah, she, she got some shoes that she put on. And then, a lot of people said, do you understand the shoes that you are putting on? I was reading it, in, in, you know, in, in the, it was in the news then. And they said, those shoes were designed by someone, I think it was in Italian. And they went and they put exactly what he had in mind when he was designed. He said, I was actually designing for a certain stature of a woman that can attract me. Can you imagine? You see these things, they are designed, you don't even know the spirit behind most of these things. Then you import these things. Then what do they do? They chop the word. It can produce fruit to perfection. That's why we need to constantly examine ourselves. Amen. 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 So you begin to see, friends, that you know, in this parable, the word becomes the seed. Now the word is actually planted with intention that it brings fruit to perfection. Now that word used perfection there. In, uh, in, 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 in Luke chapter 8, verse 14. Actually, I remember uh, we, 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 we wrote it. It's actually the same word, but this one is Genesis 40. They all come from the root word telos. Telos means the goal, the objective. It's a root word that comes from. And, and telesphoria means what? To bring to its intent the goal again. Do you begin to see? So that seed, that you come to this intended goal. That's why the prophet of God said, you plant a grain to the end. That it must actually do. You see, it's intended goal. And now that's the church now through the Catholic church. Amen. And now we know Paul said to the Thessalonians, he, he said the word of God must have free course in your life. Which actually means, the word course it actually means, it's a process. Paul says, I run my, I have run my race, I finished my course. Which means he finished his, what, his race. So the word of God must run in your life until it achieves its course in your life. Amen. 
Amen. That's why we are coming to church, friends. That's why we read the Bible, we listen to those tapes and what is because we want this way to wake in our hearts. Amen. Just like when a person and a child start eating food, you begin to see what happens to the child, he begins to grow, to grow. But also a child must come to a point where he no longer remains as a child. Amen. Amen. If your child remains as a child, you go to a doctor and you say there's something wrong with this child. Isn't that so? Because you know that if you feed that child, that child must go. Home. The intention there is to come to a point where the child becomes an adult where he can begin to look after himself. He has come to his perfection. That's why Paul says, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. But when I became a man, I put off childish things. Do you begin to see that? Now, the church cannot always remain as children in the church. Every time you have gone to tell them, sisters dress properly, the brothers don't come with buttons all removed. They don't want to see your chest. <laughs> don't come with those trousers, which are so tight. <laughs> that when you go home, you have to help your other brother to help you to pull the trousers out. <laughs> But we, we can't be uh, uh, going back to those sisters don't put on you know things that are so tight you know, your dress is so tight that they begin to shape the whole body. Amen. That's why in the world they do that because they have a, a reason for doing that. Amen. But we are children of God. We dress differently. Hallelujah. Not because it's a doctrine of this church. No! It's because our Father is the first person who introduced dressing. Amen. It was introduced in the Garden of Eden for one reason, for one reason. And what was the reason? To cover nakedness. Is that how God introduced clothing? So to God, the objective of clothing is what? To cover the nakedness. Now you find the child of God now. He doesn't want to do that. It's sister, he does No, there's something wrong. You don't understand these things. It's not a doctrine of the church, it's a doctrine of the Bible. Amen. We don't want you to go say in our church don't say the Bible. Yes. Amen. Your legal authority is not the church. It is the Bible. Amen. Your zeal must be show me where it is in the Bible. Amen. That should be your zeal. You remember that message brother Brother says the passion. To read the word of God. Yes. The zeal to reach out in the spirit. Yes. All begins to fade away. Yes. As the church begins to pattern after the world. Yes. And to think more about what the world thinks about them. We are not worried about what the world thinks about us. Because the crowd must be at our back. Yes. When we sing those songs, let's mean it. Though no one joins me, still I will follow. No turning back. Yeah, you don't have to let your father, your mother, your brother, your sister follow you. Say, no, I'm following because I have a relationship. Always remember the woman of Samaria. Something happened to her so powerful. She was a prostitute. When she met Christ, she threw down a pot. I come on a pot. So I come on a pot of us. Then she ran into the city and said, come see a man. It had never been heard that a prostitute could bring the entire city out. But the most amazing thing, as the men of the city, what exactly has happened to you? The Bible says they believed because of the woman. Yes. But it didn't stop there. The Bible says they now put it into the Christ, not the woman. And they stayed, they said, Christ, please, can you remain here for more, more, more days? When they stayed with Christ enough to be convinced and to be concerned, the Bible says they then went back to the woman and said, Woman, we believe, not because you have told us, we are seeing these things for ourselves. Amen. It should be your personal revelation. Amen. Sometimes Philip brings Nathaniel in. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Amen. But Nathaniel must come to a point where he says, I believe these things. Not because of Philip, but because 
start seeing these things for myself. Yeah. Now we want to church with brothers and sisters like that. Who believe not because of their husband, not because of the wife, not because of the pastor or the preacher, but they believe because they are seeing these things for themselves in the Bible. Not because of your father, not because of your mother, but because you have a revelation that this thing is actually God's spirit. It's not for my brother, my sister. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the middle of prayer. Do you begin to see that? Now, we want to, you know, it's, 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 we're talking about that lady who was challenging, you know, that uh, uh, imam. Imam, imam, yeah, imam. You know, the imam is a, a teacher of Mount of Islam. Now, the one who is called the doctor and something, something, he was maybe a famous person who always, he, you know, he's like their Goliath. Who always, you know, calls out to the Christian that your Christian, your Christian book is nothing compared to what? To the Quran. So in this instance, he was actually talking about the Bible and saying, you know, you're feeling so good, you know, about that then a certain sister. Now, you know, the amazing thing is, in, 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 in the Arabian world today, a woman, they look down on a woman so much. So God knows how to fix some people. What exactly is looked down is the one that stood up now to challenge the Quran. God said, I'm not going to take a thing, I'm going to take what you think is not worth. And, and a, a certain lady stood up and said, I cannot stand hearing you saying something about my Lord. Mm. And when you know that, 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 thing, that, that Imam said, I know your Bible better than you. She said, Sir, the religious leaders knew their Bible very well. They missed Jesus Christ. It's a revelation. Not just pick your soul. Ah, I love what that is. Now, that's what sisters we need to have in the church, man. Who are able to stand with the word when somebody comes and says, We no longer need the first word ministry, we say, Brother. Since when has God changed his mind about his word? Amen. You see a church that is not tossed by every wind of God. A certain person comes in, then the brother, you know, they are saying this. No! How long will you remain as a child? Hallelujah. You must come to pray and say, Brother, I have a sister, but I have to teach you a few things here. Yes. Have you ever read the message? God doesn't change his mind about his way. And you ask him, Do you actually know something about the omniscience of God? Amen. Do you know what that means? Mm. You must ask him, Do you understand omniscience? You will be able, you will find the person who will get so perplexed for oh, what I tried to say. Then you say, Omniscience does not allow God to add new knowledge to what He has. He can't change His knowledge. And then you said, Have you ever heard the quotation about the continuity of scriptures? Amen. 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 Oh, friends. This is why so many churches, you know, they become to be blown so much by every wind of doctrine, you know. Then you go somewhere, you see something, you want to come and force it into the church. You don't understand. Amen. We can't remain as babies. Amen. That's why in Philippians, Paul was saying, not as though I had already attained, I that were already perfect. But I follow after him that I may apprehend for that which I have also apprehended of Christ Jesus. He says, I, 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 I don't say I'm already perfect. That's where it comes again. In other words, Paul was saying, I have not yet reached my intended goal. But in Timothy says, I fought the fight, I've, I fought the fight, I finished uh, my course. Paul knew that he had finished the race. Amen. So you, you, you begin to see. That, that, that's why we, 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 we talked about ambition, if you remember. Uh, 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 you know, we talked about ambition. Uh, when the prophet of God was saying the church of God must be the highest, um, must have the highest ambition. And we said you cannot have an ambition. You cannot have uh, once you have an ambition, it's like a goal. It creates a desire. You see, that's what we actually spoke. And then we spoke about the rich young ruler. He, he, you know, that, you know, the rich young ruler, you know, he came to Christ and he said, what can I, what, you know, the, what, what, what the Bible actually says, 
He said, the young man, in verse 20 of Matthew chapter 19, he says, And the young man said unto him, to Christ, All these things I kept for my youth. Then he said one thing that really excites me. What lake I yet? Oh, hmm. You know what Paul says to one church? He says, I want to come there and perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Mm-hmm. That's why we come to church. Mm-hmm. Whatever is lacking in our faith may be perfected. Mm-hmm. So this young man said, Christ said, he said, what must I do to have eternal life? Christ said, keep the Ten Commandments. He said, all these things I've done since I was young. Maybe chapter 19. Mm-hmm. That's what that young man came to Christ. He says, I've done it. He says, but what lake I? He knew that although he had kept the Ten Commandments, there was something that was still lacking. Then Christ said some wonderful things. Jesus said that to him. If thou wilt be perfect. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Now which means perfection. You know, could not come just by what keeping the Ten Commandments. Without this, the Ten Commandments could not make the man perfect. Christ said, if you want to do if you will be perfect. Now Christ was speaking about perfection, and I think that was his telos, which means the God which God intended him. You go back now to Adam. You're saying you want to be like Adam. How God actually intended for Adam to be in his image, in his likeness. He said, now I will tell you how you want to come into his image and likeness. If thou wilt be perfect. Which just means keeping the Ten Commandments is not enough to make Without that, the Ten Commandments could not make you perfect. Without this, God helping made a plan that without this, the Ten Commandments would not make you perfect. Do you begin to see that, friends? We are talking about perfection here. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's why the Bible says, for the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the, the and not the very image of things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers there and perfect. They came every year, every year. And and you know uh, what proves that they were not perfect? The very fact that each year they came back with what? With the sacrifices proved something. That is a principle you must understand in this Bible. Wherever there is a sacrifice, there is a remembrance of sin. That's the principle of the Bible. Remembrance is a memorial, which means there is an event that you always must see. Remember, we just said that when we started. Right? The Bible says, you know, where there are sacrifices, there is always a remembrance of sin. Adam, in Genesis 1, in Genesis 2, never offered a sacrifice. Amen. Now do you see where perfection is, brother, sister? How could Adam offer that when he was perfect? Adam never offered a sacrifice. He never killed the lamb. In the Garden of Eden, Genesis 1, Genesis 2. Only in Genesis 3, that's when the first lamb was killed by God himself. Why did he kill it? It had to die in the place of Adam and Eve. Do you begin to see that lamb, poor lamb, died because God said, In the day you eat thereof, you surely die. So the lamb died in the place of the sinful man. That's why in the Old Testament they used to kill a lamb. Whenever you had sin, you'd come with your lamb. You see, then you put your head on the lamb. In other words, you are now transferring the innocence of the lamb to yourself. And the lamb is now taking your what? Your unrighteousness. That's what the lambs were there for. So each year when they came with the lamb, it actually reminded them that ah, there been more sins since the last time you ate, there were more sins that were done. So now you are asking now for the sins of last year. Mm-hmm. So every time they brought a lamb, you would know that ah, there's an event, there's something must have happened, so you come with the lamb. Right. And the Bible says, where there's no way there's a remission of sins. Because God says, I will remember their sin no more. He says, when there's remission of sin, there's no need for sacrifice in it. Yeah. Do you begin to see, friends? There's no need for sacrifice. You must understand some of these things from the Bible. Mm. That's why Christ of 
offered himself as a sin offering once and for all. He doesn't need to die. The God means otherwise he would have died since the foundation of the world he would have died. What? I like this Melchizedek priesthood. Under which we are all uh, 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 which we are all under the Melchizedek priesthood. Yes. Amen. We are not under the Levitical, you know, order of, uh, of Aaron. We are under a priesthood that was made with an oath. An oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. You know, in, in, in people used to say, or like Pika, how much do Pika? And can you pick our pick? Nene Musukuru. Uno pick that one are greater than you. The Bible says God is finding no one greater than Himself. He saw by Himself. By myself, if I sworn, say the God. Thou art a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Hey, just to show the assurance. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, friends. Father Bernard says here, Jesus told us what would be the last day so close to deceive the very elected. But when the seed comes forth from there, and the shark, the life leaves the shark, and the shark is a carrier, and that's exactly what our denominations have been. Luther, Wesley, Pentecost, and now it's time for the seed to come forth. Do you begin to see? All these things that came in, they could not make this church perfect, except when they came with the seed. That's why with Luther, we came with justification. Wesley, we came with simplification. Pentecost, restoration of the bread, uh, restoration of the gifts, but the way they had to come on it again. Yes, sir. That's why the Bible says, they without us cannot be made perfect. We're going to stop here again. And we hope we can take the change. You know, hope, we hope this time we can actually go to the ministry, to the church, and to the individual again. Praise the Lord. So you are here for a purpose. Your life is got to have an aim. Let me read this quotation once again. In close, uh, we will come back to it again. But just a word from God on the big side of the desert boiled the whole thing up again in Victory Day 1963. What happened to Moses? He got his glasses focused. God's only purpose wasn't to marry this beautiful Ethiopian colored girl back there. Now, you see what the brother of God is saying? He says God's purpose for Moses was not just to marry that Ethiopian woman. But God allowed him to marry the, that Ethiopian woman. Is that right? Yeah. But that wasn't only God's purpose. To settle down and have children and raise his father in law's sheep. He says that wasn't the whole purpose for him just to marry that colored girl and then he settles to looking after his father's sheep and having children. God didn't just put you here just to be born and then after you are born you go through school after school you want to find a good job and you want a good job you want a good husband you want a good Wife. And then when you have got a good wife and a good husband, you want children. When you have children, you say we want to have a house of our own. That's not all that's good. And then afterwards, six feet down you go. Is that all that God actually put you here on earth? Now, to other people, that's all that they live for. They can see no further than all those things. Now you say Moses purpose in life wasn't just to marry in that beautiful colored girl, to settle down and have children and raise his father's worship, but his mission was to deliver the children of God. Mm-hmm. Out from that under bondage, that was his mission. That's what he was born for. <laughs> you see, that's the reason why God actually had Moses to come here on earth. You see, he allows us to have so many other things. You, see, you understand what I'm trying to say? He allows you to get married. He allows you to marry. He allows you maybe to have a car, to have a house. He allows you maybe to have children. But that's not the prime objective of your life here on the earth. That's not what you're born for. And each one of us is born for something. Amen. You must find in your life, what am I here on this earth for? Mm. Remember that brother who we were talking about, that he, he, 
he went to the other side and he heard the voice saying, your time is not yet. Remember, we're talking about Brother Moses, you know, in his testimony, where he said, he, 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 just recently, he was taken up ill and straight to the hospital, put into the ICU, you know, because his potassium level had gone so low that it was shutting down all his organs. And his body was turning cold. When he turns cold, it means you are dying, you are go going. And then he says, the next thing I was in another lake. A beautiful lake. But then a voice spoke to him, said it was very hoarse. Like it was hoarse. He said, your time is not yet. You need to come back. I still have a work for you, which I will show you. Now you see, his work is not in, 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 in Dubai. His work is not just to help his children and his wife. God is saying, I'm going to wait before you. So you, you can see his work was not just helping children, was not helping just his job. You, do you see? You have a mission that God is, you are born here for something. Maybe <laughs> your mission is just to testify to one brother who's going to become a preacher and bring many people over to Christ. Maybe that's your mission, though. All the years God prepares you just for one thing. Can you imagine? It just took three and a half years for Jesus Christ. Right. And his mission was true. Amen. We don't hear about the first 30 years. We only hear about the three and a half years of his life. And he was true. Can you imagine that God sometimes waits for so long just to use you for three and a half years? Amen. Or even for less than three and a half years. Then he says, it's over. You've accomplished your purpose here on this earth. Now, the problem of course, and each one of us is born for something. We just wasn't put here for nothing. That mountain never happened out there to be just to be. That tree was put there for a purpose. Everything is for a purpose. It's got to save. Oh, brother, sister, there was a certain tree that actually was put for a very wonderful. It endured droughts. It endured people cutting down. That's the tree that Christ was going to be made. Amen. Can you imagine? That tree was actually good. And we are here for a purpose. He says maybe to testify to one person and get themselves. And out of that, it might come a preacher who will send a million souls to Christ. Mm. Do you actually see, friends? Your very life is for the purpose, which means our coming here together as a church, we are trying to achieve something else. So it means we must pull in one direction, all of us. When we say prayer time, everyone prayer time. When we say church, everyone comes to church on time. Not, you know, after the preacher is preached, then uh, now you are bringing yourself to church. Come on, church. Let's not be true. We have to be told every time. Ten o'clock here, everyone is here. Then we can start and have more time for the word. Isn't that so? Shall we stay? I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights and gain.
the challenge that he cast in your heart. You want life with the peoples. You want life with the God. You want to say, Lord, open my eyes to the reality of why I'm here, Lord. Father, help me. Coming to church must not be a, 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 a burden. That each time I have to be told to come to church on time. Lord, I want to, on my own, to be here. I want to be here praying with others. I'm not yet here. I'm praying, you know, casting out the demons that may be in the place here so that when we have fellowship, the Spirit of God can move freely in the church. There's a desire that when we lift your hand and say, Lord, remember me today. As we ask our pastor, you know, to pray for each and every person here and to pray for the church. Precious Lord, we thank you this morning that we have been in divine presence, where you can speak to us, Father, for the different things concerning our lives. We are so grateful today that we know you as the omniscient, great omniscient God, the God who knows everything, the God who knows, Father, before time began, the God who knows time, and the God who knows the need to eternity. He foresaw us before the foundation of the world. He desired the world of sons and daughters. He predestinated us to live in this age and in this hour. And he has everything planned around our lives. Lord, us being, he saw us being overcomers. He saw us being possessors of all things. And he saw things that would come and try and hinder us becoming to that eternal goal and eternal purpose. Because we know all, all the seven ages, at the end of it all, you say, to him that overcometh, all of God, there's a promise, there's a blessing to the overcomer. And Father, that intended goal, the intended purpose for us, Father, you saw us coming into glorification, you saw us coming to that place, Father, where God, like you said yourself in John chapter 17, Father, give me, give me that glory that I had with you before the foundation of the world. Father, we must come into that glory, we must come to the end of the world, Father, like this one says, and we hold the cross of redemption. We understand and say, well done. Heavenly Father, we know before we come to that place, there's a time of testing. And that's what we're going through this hour, Lord. Amen. I can say this, the prophet's life through uh, the experience of Tony Zabel, when he was watching the prophet, and he walked with the prophet to a place where the prophet showed him that wilderness. And he says, you must walk some of this all alone. Amen. Heavenly Father, that's what we're going through. But the purpose is to meet you on the other side. Amen. And that place is already defined, Father. That's why your angel, the word says in in Exodus 23, 20, I was, I'm sending an angel before you to keep you in the way yeah. and to bring you to that intended place, that prepared place. Oh God, I we want to thank you in the New Testament again. You say, I go prepare a place for you. Heavenly Father, you go to preparation. Everything is planned, everything is prepared. For whom it is prepared. Father, we want to pray that tonight, this morning, we'll take from the word that we've given today to overcome our battles, to overcome our trials. We know that's how we always do, Father. You give ammunition. You give whatever we need to go through life journey. And you have given it through your way this morning, Father. Each one is in the hour that needs today, Father. We want to we receive that way that you have given. We know in this way is everything that we need. Yes. Just like you multiply the bread and the fish. But they never asked how much salt they needed, how much seasoning they needed. You, you had it exactly to their taste, Father. We want to pray that the same thing, that way, which is given this morning, that creative way, we have to receive each one in, according to our faith, Father. Right? Receive it with revelation and know that it was God who was speaking to us. It was God who was addressing our life issues. It was God who was addressing what we need for tomorrow. And Father, if you are humble enough and wise enough, Lord, to take from what has been given today, Father, feast on it and meditate on it, Father. And accordingly, Father, our lives will be transformed, Lord Jesus, into what you want us to become, Lord. We want to thank you that, Lord, we will be here this morning. So we pray that, Father, as we go to our homes, we will meditate on this, Father. God, jealously, never let it flow or come to the be lost with it, our fingers, Father. Mm -hmm. But Lord, like you say, even the, the remnants of that spoken word creation, Father, when you multiply the bread and the fish, you say, let it not go to waste. Mm -hmm. But you can gather the two baskets of the leftovers. Lord, whatever has been said today, maybe we missed it somewhere, but we bring us, Father, the Holy Ghost, the after teacher, to bring it all together for us, Father. Those who record it, go back and listen to it again and pray over it. Give it the one for last week, give it the one for the other week. Yeah. Put it all together like the prophet says. We want you to accumulate all these things here. See what has been said. See what has been done. 
God has a message for us all through those things, Father. You lead us through those things. You guide us through those things, Father. These messages don't come just haphazardly. They are designed to bring us to that place, Father. So we are thankful this morning. We will have you in our presence. We will have you speak to us the way you teach. He's teaching us, admonishing us, correcting us, rebuking us. And we take that correction. When we take that leadership, when we take that teaching, knowing it's coming of the of great omniscient God, yes, the great all-knowing, all the sovereign Jehovah, who knows everything, he knows exactly what he's doing in this hour. May we be so humble to receive from you, Father. Bless our brother that you ever yes, use sir, the Lord is anointing and protecting his fire and his stone virtue and whatever need there is, Father. Mm. May we go in the strength of the power of this message, knowing that this is God, the God of purpose for each one, no matter what situation we have in this life. There's a purpose for our lives. Yes. Many of us are living because there's a purpose for him. Yes. The, 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 the hall of prayer and the hall of prayer was a purpose for him. Sarah, all of them, Father, yes. giving us in this age, each one has a purpose, Father. Yes. He said, John the Baptist, oh God, you have only used for six months. Yes. And his purpose was finished. Christ, yes. three and a half years. You have, you have got a purpose. Whatever it is, Father, whatever it brought us here for, may we know it, may we walk in it, may we walk in it. Thank you, Father. We love you, glorify you, we exhort you. As we go out, may go with us, may angels be around us, may we feast on this food until we meet again at your feet. We ask you to Jesus what name. Thank you. Amen. 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 After all this life is so you may sit. And the Yeah.